So the uh, we already kind of did a walk around uh, of the car, giving our new uh, energetic flow design. Um, started with our V V Motion front grille, which is carried over from the Murano, um, as well as our uh, signature boomerang headlamps. Um, Vishnu talked a little bit about the canopy look with the blacked out A, B, and C pillars, uh, which give it a real fighter jet look. Um, what I think, and, and you're probably experiencing now, though, is, is the cockpit or fighter jet feel really is injected inside the car when you sit down. As you can see, the car's completely um, just engulfing you inside. It's got the high console, uh, the uh, eight-inch navigation screen, screen, which is standard on this car, is tilted towards you at seven degrees, just giving you a, a driver-centric feel. As well, right in front of you, you have your uh, display assembly, seven inches in front of you, which can project your driver out. It can go through whatever you have in your, uh, your um, any of your safety features will show up there, or your um, audio features, uh, whatever you want to select, which is all on the steering wheel as well. Right. So uniquely visually on the car, um, just you have a lot of luxury touches, soft points in the interior, um, the true stitching, which as you can see, completely wraps around, unlike some of the competitors which have stamp stitching, um, and then we have very unique uh, colors throughout the different interiors based on the trim levels and based on the interior selection that you have, so a lot of unique features in that. So drivability-wise, uh, we're in sport mode right now, uh, which sport mode, what it does, we feel that it's a true sport mode. Uh, it adjust the throttle mapping, uh, adjust the transmission mapping uh, to give you longer shift points. It also heavies up the steering, so again I encourage you to turn it off and on and kind of feel the difference once we start getting into some roads as well. Um, and then also um, adds in some um, wanted engine sounds uh, through any, any model with the Bose system, your active Bose. The Maxima SL is a more refined and luxury-oriented car than the SR. There is more leather, the suspension is set up to be smoother, and driving dynamics are a bit more tame. Looks-wise, I think Nissan has done a great job with the new look and overall feel of the Maxima. A big focus is the fighter jet-like cockpit, encompassing the driver, making for a more driver-centric feel, as seen in the previous interior clip. So this is the uh, 1.6 liter turbo uh, Juke Nismo RS version. So we have a Nismo and a Nismo RS. And with the RS you get the um, some added, added horsepower as well as body rigidity. Um, you get these full bucketed Recaro seats as you're sitting in now. Um, and, and the drivability of the car is, is much more aggressive. This feels like a lighter clutch than the Z by far. Okay. I'm assuming that's intentional. Yes, yeah, okay. it's it's a little bit more agile, you know, obviously your tires aren't quite as wide and you just don't. It's a lighter drive. It's the Alcantara steering wheel, which is a Nismo design uh, that we apply across the whole Nismo lineup. With all the red accents. Red accents throughout, red stitching. You got your red center marker on your, uh, yeah. on your steering wheel. Uh, again, these full bucketed car of front seats are only on the RS. I noticed that you have like a lot of very cool um, color accent. Mm -hmm. Yes, on the on the Juke non Nismo, and I'm sure some of them would apply to the Nismo as well. But the Nismo, I'll talk about that for a moment. Has our uh, design cues on the outside, the red and gray, dark gray accents throughout you know, throughout the exterior of the car. Um, and, uh, but on the regular Juke, we have what's called um, the Design Studio, and it has everything from uh, bright colors to matte black, uh, different options of wheels, inserts, mm -hmm. light bezels that you can really personalize the car, um, spoilers for the rear. So okay. um, you can really customize the, the Juke a lot. Yeah, there's not a lot of manufacturers out there that offer especially like color customization options. Mm -hmm. Very tight. It is, yeah. I mean, you feel like you're high up off the ground, but it's, you know, there's no significant body weight. Still or nimble. Like that. Yeah. I mean, it's still a, a, a tight ride to the point where you, know, you feel the ground, which is what you want in a sports car, but it's not, it's not like a luxury SUV type of feel. No. Like I said, they, 
it increased the body rigidity on yeah. the RS version to, to give you that tighter, tighter feel um, through body bracing. The Duke Nismo RS is one fun car. You've got the edgy and pronounced styling that's found on all Jukes, but the Nismo model features the classic Nismo accents inside and outside the car. Just from getting in and sitting down, you feel the large side bolsters of the Recaro seats, and the transmission is short and tight. The clutch is very light, and the overall ride quality feel is very sporty, but you still have the sense of being in a larger car. Speaking with the guys at Nissan at the event, they gave stats on percentages of female customers who purchased the Juke. I was surprised to learn that Juke customers are 65% female, while Nismo Juke customers make up 55% female, and the same goes for the manual transmission option. All right, so this is the SR. This is the sport tuned suspension car. Um, it has different spring rates, dampers, uh, comes with the 19 inch tire and wheel. Um, this one has the accessory summer tire installed on the vehicle. Uh, you've also got the accessory 4DSC shift knob here. Um, what's unique about the interior on this car is we have this kind of liquid chrome uh, interior inserts. Um, you also have the Alcantara insert on your steering wheel. You get the blue stitching um, with the SR uh, and Alcantara. Um, you can also get it in the camel color interior as well. Um, some of the different functions, you have the normal and sport mode on all the cars, but the SR comes with the integrated dynamics or integrated chassis dynamics control module. So there's a few more things that change when you press the sport button besides just the steering map, the engine map, and the um, uh, transmission map. You also have the active sound enhancement system which adds engine sound into the car. It gets a little bit louder in sport mode and a little bit quieter in normal mode. Um, with the IDM functions um, kind of pull the restraints off a little bit in sport mode. Uh, you also have this paddle shifters in the SR grade. So you're in full manual mode now. You'll have to do all the shifting with the paddles or with the shift knob. <laughs> So there's a lot of redundancy for how you control um, the navigation screen in this car. You can do it with the touch screen on here. You can do it with the, um, the driver, I forget what Vishnu calls it, but the um, drive commander here. Mm -hmm. And then you have the steering wheel controls and you also have voice controls. So basically there's kind of four ways that you can yeah. access a lot of things in the car. Um, we've kept the HVAC controls separate from the touchscreen stuff so as not to confuse people. Mm -hmm. uh, we find that when you integrate everything into the touchscreen, it becomes a lot more confusing for the customer. Right. And like with a lot of um, systems today with the voice mm -hmm. recognition, it's not very good. How is, how is yours? So we've tried to make some improvements, especially with... Um, just the microphone being able to hear the driver in the car. Um, obviously, there's a lot of things that are difficult with different accents, different dialects. Um, not a whole lot has been done to improve on that over our existing systems in this car, but it is the next evolution of our system. So any improvements that we have made are included in this vehicle. Okay. Yeah, I can definitely feel a difference in the... Um, Suspension yeah, and the... Definitely how much more vibration you're sensing yeah. uh, through the vehicle because of the sport tuning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we tried to, you know, there's the last generation we had the sport model and we had the, the regular suspension as well. Um, because there's an enthusiast market that really likes the sport tuned suspension, you know, we tried to push this car so that it was a much more stable car than the last vehicle. Mm -hmm. Not that the last car was unstable, but we had some body control issues. So um, the platform as a whole is more stable and this sport tuned suspension, um, you know, it's just, it's a comfortable suspension, but it's also very flat and stable. Uh, whereas the outgoing car was not, had a little bit more body roll than this car does. Mm -hmm. Um, but not everybody likes this type of suspension. So we have yeah. the base suspension on the car, um, which comes on the S, the SV, the SL, and the Platinum model with the 18-inch tire. And it's a much more comfortable suspension for the broad spectrum of maximum customer, or maximum customer.
The Maxima SR looks very similar to the SL on the outside, while the interior is the big difference. As you saw in the interior shots of the SR, the seats have a quilted Alcantara that brings not only a luxury feel, but a sporty feel, especially with the Alcantara steering wheel. Engine noise is more prominent, the ride is stiffer, and throttle response is quicker, especially in sport and paddle shifting. Stats for female Maxima buyers the last generation are around 40%. I think with the quilted Alcantara seats in the SR, there will be a lot more women looking to the Nissan Maxima.